Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> After the service, I would really like to request you to stay for uh, 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 maybe about 10 minutes. Uh, I would like to give the time to Brother Newton. He wants to share something with us. So after the service, my sermon also won't be too long. So you be assured of that. I can see some smiles on the faces. Yeah. So uh, please do remember that. Um, our meditation this morning, let us turn our Bibles to Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. Something happened with a girl when she told her mother, Mom, I'm going out with my friends. Mother was worried. She said, uh, in Tamil or, you know, we call Magale or Mole or whatever it is, said, be careful. <clears throat> I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not happy to send you with your friends today. She said, no, Mama, I have to go. So mother walked with her daughter holding her hands to the walkway and they were the friends in the car. When the mother saw the friends, she was upset because they were not in a very good condition. They were drunk. And this teenage girl was so adamant that she wanted to go. Mother said, after putting her into the car, she said, May God be with you. But this girl said, Mom, already the car is cramped. We are all there, fully packed. If God wants, let him sit in the trunk. <laughs> and it so happened, mother was so worried, the car left and it met with an accident. The car met with an accident that, no, it went beyond recognition. All the people who traveled, they died. It really happened. All the people in the car died. But the police found the trunk intact. Nothing happened to the trunk. And when they saw it, there was a crate of eggs inside the trunk. Nothing, not even an egg was broken. We should understand it is always good for us not to go against something bigger than us. Last week I was walking from my home to the church, a huge bison was walking towards me. You know, I thought, you know, better not to walk, cross over, I went back. I stood there for some time and it crossed me because I know if I cross, today will be the Thanksgiving service or something she would have done, my wife would have done for me. <laughs> you know, going against something big is always, you know, a, a dangerous thing. Numbers 21 tells us a story about the Israelites going against God and Moses. If you turn your Bibles there, the story goes on like this, that these people, they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. So they were near Mount Hor. What happens in Mount Hor is there was a king called Arad, He's a Canaanite king. When Israelites were walking that way, he came and blocked that road and he fought against Israel and he killed them. And many Israelites lost their lives and the children of Israel, as usual, they went and cried to Moses and said, Oh Moses, look what had happened. You know, God promised this land to us. We are here holding his promise and look at the people, they have lost their lives here. Moses cried back to God and God came and held these people to destroy this king and to capture that land. That's what the hall is, the Mount of Hall is. They were there seeing the goodness of God. And it also says it is by the way of Red Sea. Red Sea was going on the other side. Here they won the victory after praying to God. And God's hand was there. And here is the Red Sea. Red Sea always reminds them what God has done. Children of Israel were slaves in Egypt. God sent Moses to bring them out. And Moses went and spoke to Pharaoh. Pharaoh was not happy to send the Israelites. But ultimately, he has to send them. 
As they were going, Pharaoh said, no, I will not lead these people. I will go after them. So he took his allied forces, the Navy SEALs of those days in Egypt. He took them. The, the, uh, the chariots were so sophisticated chariots. The men were so highly trained men. He went after Israelites and finally they lost their lives. Red Sea reminded them that God was at work when he called them. Red Sea reminded God is at work whenever they cried to God. And that is the place they were. And now what happens again and again they were seeing the goodness of God. God's hand was there when he was, uh, you know, when they were destroying the Canaanite king Aaron. God was there in reminding the people, you know, what happened in Red Sea. And now these people, Israelites again, coming before God and Moses and he, they were crying against them. Look at the verse, how it goes. And the speak, uh, verse 5, uh, uh, Numbers chapter 21, verse 5 says, And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in wilderness? No, people know that they were brought to the wilderness. They were brought to Canaan to worship God. But again and again they were talking. Hey, you brought us to die, man. Why did you bring us here? We would have enjoyed our slavery there. We had good food. We had everything. Only thing is the slave part we couldn't adjust. But everything was good. But God said, no, my children, I don't want you to be slaves. The Bible says where the spirit of God, there is freedom. When the spirit of God touches you, there is freedom. When the God of God's come into our hearts, there is freedom, there is liberty. That is what the scripture says. And when God formed the world, it was in a chaotic situation. He set things right and he said everything looks good. That is the hand of God. That is what God wants with his people. But the children of Israel, every time seeing the hands of God, they go against and against and against to God. And what happened? Not only they were, you know, angry with God, they were angry with food and water. They said, what kind of food you're giving? You know, it's a worthless bread. You know, the manna, God gave them manna. You know, what God gave, they're calling it worthless. We are not happy with this. You know, always eating the same food. Always bread for breakfast, bread for dinner, bread for lunch. Evening tea, bread, how will it be? You know, if the wife uh, gives that thing at home, bread in the morning, bread in the noon, bread in the evening, bread in the supper, finished. That's all. That home is divided forever. <laughs> this is the problem with Israel, the Israelites. They were crying, why bread all the time? Why bread all the time? And God has to tell them, you know, teach them a lesson. The Bible says, So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and the serpents bit the people, and many of the people in Israel died. Seeing God's hand, seeing God's goodness, understanding who God is, again the people of Israel, instead of coming closer to God, they were going away, away, away from God. And God has to teach them a lesson by sending fiery serpents. You know, these are these vipers, the rattled snakes of the desert. It has horns and it's a very, you know, ugly thing to see these serpents. And they went into the camp of Israel, it bit everybody and people <coughs> died. They cry and there's chaos and, you know, all these things happen. God always... Tells people not to go against him. A few <coughs> chapters before the same book of Numbers. There's another person called Korah. Chapter 16, you can go home and read about Korah. Korah was with Moses. He knows everything. You know, the sons of Korah wrote many psalms. You know, we sing those psalms. Actually, some of the churches, the traditional churches, they sing the psalms, the songs of Korah. 
they are the choir, uh, choir members of the temple they stand in one place they sing when the worship goes on now Korah the father he went against Moses and he said hey Moses you're highlighting yourself too much man you know why can't you take us and put us there tell us who's holy you know it's a challenge are you holy that God only speaks to you? You're highlighting too much, man. You know, you're talking too much about yourself. Hey, God can be with us also. I can also prove myself as holy. That was the thing happened. And Moses said, okay, if you're holy, show the incense. If God accepts, okay, I will move off. You take care. It so happened, God was not pleased with Korah by those words. The later part of that 16th chapter says that the earth opened his mouth and swallowed these people, Korah and his family, the children, everybody was gone because these people were going against God. In the New Testament, we read about Saul, the Pharisee. He got letters from the, you know, the high priest and he was traveling to Damascus. And he was to go and persecute the church of God. God touched him. And one question he asked. Paul, Saul, is it good for you to kick against the thorns? What will happen if I kick against the thorns? I am the victim. Thorn is not the victim. Going against God. One thing God cannot tolerate. And God sent this fiery serpents among the Israelites and people were crying. Verse 7 says, and the people came to Moses and said, oh Moses, we have sinned. You know, we have spoken against you and against the Lord. So pray to the Lord and help us, you know, that Lord may take away these serpents. Moses said, okay. Let me pray. He prayed and God said, Moses, you know, you make a bronze serpent. You put it on a pole and tell the people, whoever has been bitten, let him look at the pole and he will live. Let him look at the serpent, the bronze serpent, and he will live. The people asked to remove the serpents, to take away the serpents. But God said, no, the serpents will be there, but... All you have to do is, once you are bitten, you have to look. You know, it is an act of faith that has to be done from the part of people. That they have to look at the fiery serpent, sorry, the bronze serpent, and they will be healed. So Moses made it. And if the serpent bites, uh, bites anybody, they look at the bronze serpent and he will to look and he will live. This is the text that is before us. This is what I want to tell you today, all of us, that God is speaking to us. When we go against God, we suffer. I should not go or speak against God. That is the first thing I learned from this text. I shouldn't go or speak against God. Now the question is, do we speak against God? We don't speak against God, right? We always pray. We always sing. We always look at the other brother and say, praise the Lord, brother. How are you? I'll pray for you. We don't speak against God. But we have to be very careful that what attitude we show before God. Sometimes our attitude speaks more than our words. Right? I get angry with God many times. It so happened when I was a young boy. When my things are not being met. Instead of getting angry with my parents, I got angry with God. I said, I shouted at God. I said, are you a God? You know, that is to fulfill my thing. I went against God. There are, there are people like that. You know, sometimes we are fed up. When our prayers are not answered, we are angry with God. We show it in our attitude. We say, hey, there is no God man. I will not pray to him anymore because my prayers are not answered. We don't speak to God when we feel we are somebody. I am above you God. I have the power to do anything. I am above you. 
So I have, you know, I need not to speak to you. There was a person, the president of Brazil, Tancredo Neves, his name is. You know, he said during the presidential campaign, he said if he got five lakh votes from his party, he said not even God would remove him from presidency. <laughs> he said five lakh votes if I get, even God cannot remove me from my presidency. Sure, he got the votes. But you know what happened? He got sick a day before becoming a president and he died. The great ship, Titanic. After the construction of Titanic, a reporter asked how safe the Titanic is. And the statement was, you know, not even God can sink it. You all know what happened. The very first voyage, it collapsed. People died. Marilyn Monroe, one of the beautiful ladies, an actress, she was visited by Billy Graham one day and Billy Graham said, the Spirit of God has sent me to speak to you. And she said, I don't need you or your Jesus. A week later, she was found dead in her apartment. <clears throat> Dearly beloved, all these things are history. When we go against God in our attitude, we may not speak. But our actions and attitudes sometimes speak that we go against him and that we have to be very careful with. I should not go against God. The second lesson that we learn from this is I should always go to God and make sure I am okay with him. The children of Israel you know, when they were bitten by the serpents, they went and they said, pray, Moses, pray for us. You know, we have to check our relationship with God, how it is every day. My prayer life, how it is every day. How do I spend my time with God every day? How about his will in my life every day? It's like maintenance. You maintain your car or your house. You know, a little crack you find, immediately you wanted to fix it. A little snag in your car, immediately you wanted to fix it because you don't want to leave it because ultimately it will result in some kind of dangerous things or you may suffer something. It's maintenance. Our life, we have to check with God every day every moment saying lord how is my relationship with you am i fulfilling your will and your purpose in my life let us make sure that i'm always okay with him with god the third thing that we learn from this text is that i should always look to the direction that he shows me when god called abraham he showed the direction he said, Abraham, go to the place I show you. And Abraham didn't know which place. He didn't ask, Lord, where should I go? All he did was, you tell me I'll go. Sometimes the last minute God's guidance came. But he still, till that last minute he went. That is what faith is. That is the direction that God shows us. He shows the cross where the great reconciliation takes place. We look at the thief on the cross. He said, Father, when you come into your heaven, please remember me. He said, you'll be with me in heaven today. Reconciliation took place. When that is the direction, my direction in this world is also that reconciling with one another is the most important thing. The way Jesus, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth and life. So I have to hold on to the truth, walk by the truth, stand by the truth, looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. Christ has shown me the heaven's way, the highway for heaven, so that I can walk in that direction. Fanny Crosby was a lady who lived in England. 
she became blind when she was six years old. She became blind by a doctor who gave her wrong treatment. But all through her life, seeing the beautiful world and suddenly everything falling dark on her side, she started looking at things by faith. The beautiful hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, was written by her. The song which we sang, Jesus Keep Me Near the Cross, was written by her. And she wrote one of the beautiful hymns. She said, all the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? How can I doubt his tender mercy? Who through being with me all through my life? That is the direction. Even though she is blind, her spiritual eyes is open. And she knows where she is heading to. Dearly beloved, this morning, Christ is the Lord. He is showing us the way. Look and live. Look at the cross and we will be established forever in Christ. That oh, what a foretaste of glory that we enjoy in this world today. That is the message that the Lord is giving us today. Christ, I should always look at the direction which he shows us. He showed the Israeli lights to look. Look in faith. The people has to have faith. They would have gone against Moses and said, Moses, we asked you to pray and remove these serpents, but rather you're putting a bronze serpent and you're saying, look, you know, how will I look when I'm bitten by a serpent? I will look at myself rather than looking at that bronze serpent. And what will happen? What if I die? It's a step of faith for the Israelites that Moses created, that God created for them. You know, if I cut my hands, if somebody tells me, go look at your wife's face, you'll be healed. You know, is it applicable? <laughs> what will I think? <laughs> I will rather go to a doctor and get it stitched and get it, you know, all the uh, medicine on that. But this is exactly what happened to Israelites. You're bitten and they said, you go look at the bronze serpent. Will he die or not? It's an attitude of faith that takes that person to look at that serpent. And this is exactly what John says, that Jesus, like Moses, lifted up the serpent. He's been lifted up. Who being looking at him will live forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whomsoever believes will not perish but he will have an everlasting life. Dearly beloved, let us look to God and live in a way that pleases God. Let our attitude speak well of ourselves before God and others. Let me always fulfill the perfect will of God as I live in this world. And let me walk in the direction that he shows me. Let that be the life that we have for the glory of God and our relationship with others. May God bless us as we continue to walk God's way. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.